<laughs> um, so as, as I mentioned, I'm neither really an experimentalist nor a historian. So um, I, I wish that I had more information to be able to attribute, you know, for example, what, what results were the product of whose research. Um, and again, I, I, it wasn't entirely just Einstein came up with all this. It's that he understood at least the experimental basis well enough to put this picture together. So we're going to have, um, uh, I mean, it's a rather simple setup. We have a voltage supply here, and let me make sure I'm putting in the right direction. So, as you're, as you're called, the way that we draw a voltage supply, we have the positive terminal here, the negative terminal there, and I'm going to hook a battery up to what seems to be a, like, one part of a parallel plate capacitor. Um, or in other words, just a big, a big metal conductor that I'm going to hold in kind of a you know, vertical direction. So this attains a positive charge as we hook a battery up to it. And then on this side here, we're going to hook up at least, you know, a, a fair ways away, another parallel plate. Not unexpectedly. And we attach the negative terminal to it, so that achieves a negative charge there. Um, but we, we, we're gonna, we're allowed to, so this is a variable, potentiometer or variable voltage supply, so we can vary the, the voltage. And um, in addition to doing that, we can measure, for example, the current through here. So we have an ammeter attached somewhere. And pretty clearly if, excuse me, um, pretty clearly if these plates are held, you know, if they're not touching, as you turn this uh, uh, voltage supply on, you know full well that, you know, if you stay under what we, we consider safe lab conditions, you're never going to get a direct, you know, flow of charge from one plate to the other. Um, if you did, you would have exceeded the, um, the dielectric capacity of air or whatever medium it is that you're at. But let's, we know full well, though, if we haven't ramped the voltage up well enough, you can keep turning it up, but you're not going to get any measurable current through there, um, at least through the entire circuit. So, so we, we have a solid prediction of what will happen here to start off. Um, but what we're going to consider, though, is a strange facet of it, that under certain conditions, that may not necessarily be true. And specifically, if we hold up a flashlight or, or like, you know, maybe a couple laser beams or, or, or something like that, um, and, but it actually, it will be good to consider this as more or less lasers. So you're, you are shining monochromatic light at a source. And all that means is it has one wavelength. It's not spread out in wavelength. And again, a, a perfectly achievable way to do that is get a damn laser. So, um, by the way, lasers are another great topic for, 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 for example, your, um, your end of your project. Because lasers are a fundamentally quantum system, and by the time we go through some of the solutions for the, Schro the Schrodinger equation, you'll see why, why kind of a laser works. So, um, that's something to think about. But let's do something interesting here. And let's take a, um, a beam of light, and let's just take an average wavelength. So we have a flashlight here, and I'm going to shine green light at it, and it's assumed that we know how wavelength is associated with color. So, um, which, for, for your sake here, all you need to know is that there's a wavelength, and as we make that wavelength shorter, it goes from, for example, green to blue. If we make that wavelength longer, it goes for, for example, from green to red. It's the Roy G. Biv spectrum. So anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to shine light on it of a very specific wavelength, and under certain conditions, if the voltage is, is proper, maybe, maybe not, if the wavelength of this is proper, depending on what it's at, you may or may not begin releasing electrons from this plate. So these electrons, under certain conditions, might start to be released. And if that happens, the voltage that you have applied will, of course, pull them to this, to this plate here. So keep in mind there is some voltage difference between them. And since they're electrons, they want to go uphill in voltage or towards the positively charged plate, if you want to think about it like that. So we, we can essentially confirm that if, we, if what's happening is correct, is if we shine light, and if somehow or another we see these electrons jump off, 
by the way, this clearly was not how they pictured it at the time. Um, this was Einstein's revelation. <laughs> um, but what, what they saw, though, without that understanding, is that under certain conditions, they shine light, and this now reads non-zero. Or in other words, it reads a, yeah, depending on how you set it up, non-zero. <laughs> in this case, it would actually read a, uh, a yeah, positive value, or, or going this way. Um, so anyway, the point is that we have experimentally confirmed that if you shine light at this plate, you measure current. We interpret that reasonably to be the somehow initiating electrons to jump ship onto that um, without breaking the dielectric medium of air or whatever material. So is that experimental setup uh, clear? Does, it, does that kind of make sense here? 